Well, it began really in Aberdeen, South Dakota. I was living there just before I went into the service. And uh, I was basically on my own. I was living at the YMCA. And to get through my last year of high school, I say my last year, it wasn't the last year of high school. It was my last year there because I was a high school dropout. But uh, I lived at the YMCA. I worked at the theater nights as an usher. The great sum of 35 cents an hour. And then we got, got promoted to take over the popcorn machine and got a raise of 15 cents an hour. So I had the ghastly sum of 50 cents an hour I was working for. And then I got done with my junior year of high school. And it was getting pretty close to me being 17. So I had a few deaths I had to take care of. And I went to work at a lumberyard days. They, it had burned down, and they were rebuilding it, and I went to work there for a buck an hour. So when I left Aberdeen, I owed no one. I had paid off my grocery bill, my restaurant bill, the YMCA, and I had a dollar and a half in my pocket. <laughs> but I owed no one. And got on the train and went to Fort Sheridan, Illinois. That was in August of 1947. And got up there and processed. And one week past my 17th birthday, I raised my right hand and said, I'll do it. I did. And I was in the Army. From Fort Sheridan, Illinois, I went to Fort Knox, Kentucky for basic training. Completed basic training. And it was one of the colder winters they had in Kentucky. It was rather miserable, but we got done with that. And I went to the quartermaster school, which was then Camp Lee, Virginia. I believe it's Fort Lee, Virginia now. But then it was Camp Lee. And I went eight weeks to school at Camp Lee to become a quartermaster supply person. And from there, I went to Panama. We flew. To Panama, the only time I'd ever been on an airplane at that point. And uh, the pucker factor was pretty high. <laughs> you kind of puckered up and you almost cut buttonholes in the seat. But it was a uh, very interesting flight, especially about halfway there when they hit an air pocket and that aircraft dropped about 2,000 feet real quick like. And it was very interesting. Got to Panama, got reassigned to the 660th Engineers. And at that point, the 660th was a survey, topographic survey. They had a very short mission, Survey Panama. And that was it. And uh, I was in the headquarters and headquarters company. And I was assigned to the S4 section, which was supply. And uh, I spent a number of months there at uh, Fort Sherman, which is on the Atlantic side. And if you look at your map, you'll find out the Atlantic side of the Panama Canal is 35 miles west of the Pacific side. It uh, makes a loop, and then it's cut through there, and it's very strange. But at Fort Sherman, uh, played games there, and they finally got done with their mission with air. And that's when I got assigned to the 30th Infantry. And I did not like being a gravel agitator. But we got out of there, went over to Fort uh, Gulick, and then over to the Panama side. And worked there for a while. And made a few little trips. Uh, made it, managed to acquire a motorcycle that had no clutch. And you had to suicide it to get it in gear. And you fire it up and then push it real fast, jump on there and slam it in gear and away you go. And that's how the thing got going. So I got my tour in Panama, managed to keep out of jail. And uh, I was rather just not the nicest little kid in the block because I could get in trouble very easily. But I got back from Panama. And we were sitting in the harbor in New York City, waiting to get off the ship. The next morning, we would go to Fort Dix, be discharged. And that'd be it. That would be the end of my three-year duty. 